Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for May the 4th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Samuel chapters 5 and 6 and Luke chapter 23 verses 1 through 26. The title of my devotional is Who Goes Before You? We're going to be looking at 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 19 which says, Then David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. David's leadership over Israel charts a very different course than that which came before, in particular regarding Saul, but even before that, before they had a king. Um, on both of the occasions that we see where David goes out to attack the Philistines, we see it here, and then just a few verses later, we see also the Philistines coming back again and David inquiring of the Lord. And in both of these occasions, before he goes out, he inquires of the Lord. So verse um, 23 of the same chapter begins with, when David inquired of the Lord, he said, now that's the second time. What's taking place here is it's showing that before David wages war, even in individual battles, he demonstrates obedience to Moses' command to Joshua, that the high priest would inquire of the Lord for him whenever the Israelites would go out to war. We see that in Numbers chapter 27, verse 21. Moreover, he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his command, they shall go out, and at his command, they shall come in, both he and the sons of Israel with him, even all the congregation. In other words, the Lord's leadership is not to be presumed or taken for granted. So while the king leads the, is to lead the battle and to wage war, it's at God's command. And it shows submission to the Lord and that the Lord is the one who truly is Lord over his people. He's the one who um, is needed and not only his say, but also his direction and uh, his presence as well. And we see a, a very di um, a great distinction in terms of in this battle and um, with the previous one that took place in 1 Samuel chapter 4, where the ark was lost. Remember that tragic battle at Shiloh, where, the, where Israel is defeated and the ark was taken. But it's interesting, in this particular fight, in 2 Samuel 5 verse 21, it says that... The, they abandoned their idols, that is the Philistines, abandoned their idols, so David and his men carried them away. Now, what that, that shows is a, a strong contrast to when Israel lost the ark at Shiloh in 1 Samuel 4, verse 11. There, the ark of God was taken. Um, and at that time, then, the ark was brought into the the um, temple of Dagon, where it was demonstrated that Dagon was stronger than God. Well, that was their intention, of course. Dagon ends up falling and even bring, a second time being broken before the Lord. But the intention was to show the, the, that God was, the gods were defeated. Um, in, that in this particular case, you have the reversal. The gods of the Philistines are defeated here, and they carry even to destroy their, their idols. So when God is with his people, they overwhelmingly conquer their enemies and their gods. And that's what this one shows. When they act faithfully to God, there's nothing that can stand in the way. And God's people don't need to fear either them or um, the power that stands behind them. In the second battle with the Philistine, God gives very specific instructions to David about waiting to attack. In 2 Samuel 5 verse 24, um, it says, It shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then you shall act promptly. For then the Lord will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. Now, previously under the leadership of Saul, Israel had received a king who would fight their battles. And in 1 Samuel 8.20, it says, so that they would be like all the nations. So they wanted a king that would go out and fight their battles, who would go before them. But that was not God's intention. 
for his people. God um, would be the one who would go and fight their battles. God would be the one who would go before them. And so under David, the Lord, and not a mortal king, would go out before Israel to fight their battles. So this points forward to us also. Just as David was not to trust in himself or um, just wage war however he thought um, was fitting, we also too need to inquire of the Lord, go out in his direction, but also trust him that he goes before us. Even as he commands us to go out, he goes before us. He fights our battles. He's the one who prepares our way. He's the one who, even before we get there, he, this, the battle is settled, for the battle is the Lord's. So do we also act similarly to David, inquiring of the Lord before we go out to battle? Now, since we are in a constant state of warfare with our spiritual enemies, are we in constant prayer knowing we need the Lord to go before us? Do we put our faith in him? And when God works through us, do unbelievers abandon their gods? And the intention here then is abandon their gods even and come to the Lord. There's this an aspect of repentance. The enemy is overcome and people come to the Lord and are saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that, Lord, you are the Lord over your people. And before we do anything, we should be asking of you and inquiring of you. Is this what you want us to do? And if you're not in it, we don't want, want it. And we should trust you that you go out before us. You're the one who fights our battles. Lord, you're the one who gives us peace, but you, we have peace as we are in you, as we follow you, as we trust you. Thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that can stand against, against you. If, you. if God is for us, who can be against us? And we thank you that you truly are for us. Help us to, to side with you. Help us to um, walk and follow after you. In your name we pray. Amen.